Hello my dudes, welcome back to another reading vlog. It is Tuesday evening and I am currently reading still The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which I was very grateful to be accepted for on NetGalley, so I have an EARC for that. I'm around 50% through. And uh, if you watched last week's vlog, you'll know that I'm really enjoying it. This could be a new favorite book, depending on how the ending goes. We'll see, it's beautiful, but it's bloody heartbreaking. So I'm taking my time with it a little bit. I know Steph is as well, who I'm buddy reading it with. If you haven't checked out Steph's channel, please do, link in description. So my main priority for this week is finishing The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but I'm taking it, you know, at a nice speed. Also, I'm very excited to start Mexican Gothic this week, which is our buddy read over on um, Discord. Um, I'll link the link in the description if you if you would like to join for future buddy reads. But I thought I could do with a little break from the heavy fantasy because I have just finished like Ship of Magic, um, and I just want all the thrillers and horrors right now. So I'm really excited to start this. All I really know is that it's set in 1950s Mexico when we have a character who has to go out go and help out a family member and go to visit her with her new husband in this creepy mansion that may or may not be haunted. I've heard there's quite the plot twist around halfway through which I've been warned about and also been told to look forward to so it feels like it's a very polarizing book and those are the ones I'm usually most excited to try myself. So I will be talking about this one on Discord this week. I'm going to try and get my reactions to that plot twist if I can as well. So I think I'm going to start this one tonight after I finished editing the last vlog. And then later in the week, another one I want to prioritize is Fallen Kingdom. So back on the fantasy train by Morgan Rhodes. This is a very well-known fantasy series. My friend Lauren says it's a little bit like Game of Thrones, but not as heavy, I don't think. Um, but it's quite dark for a YA. Yes, please. <laughs> So I'll be trying this one soon. This one was a gift from Gemma and this one was a gift from Teresa. So thank you so much guys. These are the ones I'm going to be prioritizing this week as well as of course Invisible Life Valley LaRue. And then I have strategically left a lot of my shorter reads on this one's TBR um, to the last week of the month. So I'm going to be bashing out a bunch of that this weekend. That's the plan. But yeah, this is the beginning of the vlog. That's what I'm currently reading and stick around if you want to hear my thoughts on these books, I guess. Hello, it's first evening. I thought I'd best give you an update on Mexican Gothic before I get too carried away because I'm already on chapter 16, page 170, and this is creepy. It's been a quite a slow build up, but the atmosphere is there, and she's been having these crazy nightmares. I don't even tell you what this is about. We follow a young socialite from Mexico City whose father receives a letter from her cousin, a woman called Catalina, who's recently been married. It was a whirlwind romance. They don't really know the dude, but she's living out in the middle of nowhere with him and his family and they receive this letter from Catalina and it's very distressing, they're very worried about her. So her father says that she has to go and see what the deal is. So she gets there and yeah, it's weird. This family, the Doyle family are so, so creepy. The kind of man of the house, Catalina, her cousin's father-in-law, I guess, has already been sprouting stuff about eugenics. That seems to be a sick fascination of his. So that had me weirded out. They have these weird traditions as well in the house. You can't uh, make any noise. You can't speak at dinner. It's all very dark, very odd. Catalina's acting very odd. And then our main character starts having creepy ass dreams about the house and the wallpaper moving and things. So definitely see those influences from the yellow wallpaper, which is one of my favorites. So I'm loving it a lot. The creepiest things so far have been the nightmares that our protagonist is having, but I know we know some more things about the family and the history of the house as well. And I need to know more. I'm loving it a lot. It has, like I said, been a bit of a slow to get into, but it's, uh, you know, they're very short chapters, something exciting is revealed every chapter. I am compelled and intrigued and all of that stuff. So no doubt we'll be <laughs> rifling through this probably this evening. I'm hoping to finish this tonight. I'm also um, reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue still. I think I'm around 70% of the way through now. So I've definitely been taking my time with it because it hurts, <laughs> but I've gotten to a point now where we have a kind of, kind of a perspective change up, which I wasn't expecting, but it's nice to see the dichotomy of the situations without going into any spoilers but yeah I know that this is just gonna hurt it's really gonna it's gonna hurt but at the moment it's quite happy <laughs> but I feel like it's not gonna last long 
and uh, most of the chapters, like the past chapters, are still set in Paris. I don't feel like I need to go over what this one's about again because I did that in last week's vlog and I feel like everyone knows <laughs> really. But like I said in last week's vlog, the situation, I didn't really grasp how heartbreaking and lonely it would be until I started reading it and it kind of sunk in like, oh shit, yeah, she can't actually have, she can't possess anything, she can't leave a mark on anything and the only person that will continue to know her is this god that she made this deal with. And I like, I still really like the interactions between them two. I'm hoping we find out some more about him him but yeah loving that a lot so far as well but the main thing I'm going to try and concentrate on this evening is finishing out Mexican Gothic because I feel like I'm getting to those reveals now like I know someone said like at the midway point but this is not that long of a book so it must be coming I, I have some theories but I'm hoping it gets wild it's see it has been kind of wild in the nightmares and things so far I'm hoping that will come through into the rest of the story but we shall see. Also, here's a Bella. So yeah, we're just gonna snuggle down and you wanted attention. <laughs> we're just gonna snuggle down and read and I'll come back to you with thoughts when I have them. And then I'm probably gonna start Fallen Kingdoms as well at some point soon. But yeah, chat to you in a bit. <laughs> Okay, I just had to update to tell you that this is getting so weird. <laughs> what is happening? I actually quite like it. It's definitely been atmospheric and oh boy, there's been some graphic scenes as well. Also, trigger warnings for um, attempted sexual assault, I guess. Um, I'm still not really sure what's what's going on, but thought I'd best let you guys know about that. But yeah, this is so odd. I need to keep reading. I need to keep reading. 220 pages in, by the way. This whole family is so messed up. I wasn't expecting this from this book. I'm really liking it. But yeah, I can see why people were both warning me and excited for me to get to, um, to find out what was actually happening. So without further ado, I must continue. It's now Sunday. I'm doing a terrible job of updating you this week. So I have some reading updates for you. But as you've seen today, Massey and I went up Calton Hill, went for a walk. That's my new self-care, going out for a walk every weekend. Uh, last weekend, we went on a little wander around in Aleven Park. And this time around, Massey had to go into town today. So I figured, hey, let's go to Calton Hill. I haven't been into town in months, so we didn't stay in like Princess Gardens or anything for that long. But I did pop into Lush though, so I'm gonna show you a wee haul because I went into Lush and then I also went into Toppin & Co. I haven't been into a bookshop in months. Yeah, so it was nice to go into a bookshop again. So firstly, what I got from Lush, I got a couple of bubble bars and one bath bomb. The bath bomb I got was the pumpkin one. It's spooky season, bitches, officially. I also got a little black cat bubble bar. I haven't tried these before. But it smells pretty good and you know it's a cat <laughs> so i couldn't resist getting a couple of halloweeny ones i also got a snow fairy bubble bar because oh my god i just love snow fairy so much so i got that and then massey got himself good old intergalactic because that's his favorite so that's my little lush haul i'm really looking forward to using some of these i'm gonna get a bath actually soonish <laughs> As soon as I've given you the updates, I will be getting in the bath and reading and using some of those. But from Totten and Co, I got two books. 
Massey actually spotted this and I've never seen this edition before and I couldn't help it. Yeah, I got another edition of Alice. But this one is this really cute one. Like this is the spine here. And that's the front cover with the foiling. And then, wapow, gilded edges. I just, I, I couldn't resist it. It's so pretty. Oh my God. And it's one of my favorites, so yeah, I treated myself to that. And then I got a comment recently. This book's already on my radar. And then I got a comment recently saying, Cody, you need to read this book. No one's talking about it, read it. And yes, <laughs> that's what I needed to push me to pick it up. This is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. And it is a very pretty book as well. The end papers look like this. And naked, it looks like this. So that also kind of sold me. I know this is the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which I have wanted to read. I see it in charity shops. Every time I go to a charity shop, there's usually a copy of that book there, but I've yet to buy it. And I think that is just because the size of it intimidates me, but I have heard some buzz about Piranesi. And also actually this edition, I didn't realize until I looked when I brought it home, is signed so that's really cool as well so i think i first heard of this one from ashley i know she's excited for it but i'm not fully aware of what it's about it just says piranesi lives in the house perhaps he always has in his notebooks day after day he makes a clear and careful record of its wonders the labyrinth of halls the thousand upon thousands of statues the tides that thunder up staircases the clouds that move in slow procession through the upper halls it sounds magical that's until messages begin to appear scratched out in chalk on the pavements there is someone new in the the house. Lost texts must be found, secrets must be uncovered, the world that Piranesi thought he knew is becoming strange and dangerous. It sounds really really interesting and it is blurbed by Madeline Miller, David Mitchell and Erin Morganston. So I'm definitely <laughs> eager to give it a go. Let me know if you've picked this up, if you've maybe read it already, your thoughts on this one, please. So on to reading updates. I finished Mexican Gothic. This was wild. This was weird. I loved it so much. I can completely see why some people wouldn't like it. Someone in my comments said that the twist felt like the polar bear in Lost and I, I, I can see why you'd say that. I thought there was some nice foreshadowing, but yeah, I wouldn't have predicted what actually was happening and i just thought it was really unique actually that it does remind me of another couple of books that are my some of my favorites but i don't want to tell you what those are because then that may, might give you a hint as to what direction this goes but i don't think i've ever read a horror novel that takes this route and i really liked it for its uniqueness i do think that the horror could have been amped up a little bit. Like I didn't particularly feel like we needed the last chapter. I feel like some people would have appreciated that last chapter, but I'm someone who doesn't like things wrapped up all too well. But still, I really enjoyed this. It definitely had the creepiness in the first half. And then it just went balls to the wall with the weird. And I really liked it. I really liked this author's writing, which has me very excited to try Gods of Jade and Shadow. And I feel like it was cleverly done. I liked the inspiration from the yellow wallpaper. It did remind me a little bit of Shirley Jackson in places too. And I really liked our protagonist, which was nice for a thriller because sometimes in thrillers, the protagonist is just a dumb bitch. She wasn't a dumb bitch, liked it. <laughs> Although I will say for the last 20% of this book, I was kind of screaming like, just do this, just do this. Eventually the thing that I wanted to happen did happen. So a little bit predictable in that respect, but I would not have guessed the direction this took just from the synopsis. It was wild, it was weird. And you know, I like those kind of things, but yes, I understand why this would be very polarizing. <laughs> so I think for my rating, I'm giving this a high four star, not a five star just because I didn't really like the ending chapter as much. I feel like it was unnecessary and it could have amped up the horror but yeah wild really enjoyed it it creeped me out the, the family creeped me out so i liked that so yeah four stars for that and then yesterday i read a whole book and didn't tell you about it at all but i did read fallen kingdoms by morgan rose and i'm not sure I'm not sure guys. <laughs> it does feel very much like a traditional fantasy story. I understand the comparisons to Game of Thrones. When I first started reading this book, I was very pleasantly surprised because it was kind of brutal and she kind of goes there. But the more I was reading, 
the more I found it to be a touch predictable, I'm just saying. <laughs> but it does have lots of things that I like. It has lost magic, which is elemental magic, which is cool. A brimming war between different nations with different ideologies and different cultures. An interesting mythology and politics and morally grey characters. Although it did have some tropes that I'm just not particularly a fan of anymore, such as love triangles or love squares or love hexagons. <laughs> Princesses that are so beautiful that pretty much every male character fancies them. <laughs> that kind of thing. I didn't hate it, just some things I rolled my eyes at a little bit. Also there's a, well I wouldn't say it was a romance, but there's some kind of icky relationship maybe happening. I don't, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you've read it, you probably know what I mean. Like I get it, but are we supposed to empath, are we supposed to root for it? Are we supposed to root for it? I'm not sure. I don't think we are, but then like the perspective, if you haven't read this, you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but those of you who have, could you let me know in like for the rest of the series, is, does, is that still a thing? Cause that kind of puts me off a little bit. Yeah. I'm just not sure about this yet. I didn't love it as much as I was expecting to. I still liked it. I'm giving it like a high free star rating for this one. I still will definitely continue on in the series because I have um, the next two. But let me know. It has the potential to be one that I'll really like, but there's some things in this first book that I'm just like, mm, I don't know. It just was a bit hyped up for me, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but I will definitely be continuing. Didn't hate it by any means. I gave it a high free star rating. This offer definitely surprise me in a pleasant way with how ruthless she is with some of these characters but at the same time I feel like it could be amped up like maybe she was holding back a little bit so do let me know if you've continued on with the series um your thoughts please but yes I read that too which means I don't have too many books left on the TV I still haven't finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because I'm scared I think I'm up to like 85 percent of the book and it's just so sad and I feel like I know how it's gonna end and I'm, I'm scared but I will finish that now that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and then I'm going to start on some other ones this evening the first one I think I'm going to pick up is Freshwater by Akweki Imezi this is one of my most anticipated I'd say because I loved Pet so much which was um this author's YA debut and this was their adult debut I'm reading all the sad books it seems this month but yeah, it was confirmed by some of you guys that this is a sad book. So a little bit, a little bit trepidatious, but it's only short. It's going to be fine. I do really like, well, I really liked Pet. So I'm sure I will like this one too. I think it talks mostly about mental health. So it might be a little bit heavy, but I'm going to also read... I'm going to try and read as much as I can this evening. I'm going to try and read some graphic novels and, well, some manga and a graphic novel tonight too. So firstly... Oh, Skyward! <laughs> graphic novel I might try this one but I think I'm gonna get in the bath and read fresh water and then read Tomia which is about a killer succubus immortal lady whose lovers always try and kill her and then she always comes back and cause more havoc I think so <laughs> looking forward to this and then also I have the girl from the other side as well which I think is going to be really whimsical and beautiful so this is kind of the agenda for this evening I don't expect to get all of them read tonight but I would, well, my aim is to get these, that way, these two read tonight. So that's what I'm currently reading. But first, gonna finish <laughs> The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and we'll see if I cry. <laughs> so yeah, I read, I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and I'm a mess now. Oh, that was just beautiful and heartbreaking and it ended up including one of my favourite tropes, which I wasn't expecting, but I loved it. I loved it so much. It's definitely five stars. I'm I'm actually surprised. For some reason, I, I thought there was parts of this book where it was quite slow and I thought, okay, this is probably going to be four star read. But the ending, I think, was was done so well and it wasn't what I expected, but it was it still hurt. <laughs> It was just such a beautiful story, a really good concept, well told, um, but not in a way that I expected. And boy, it got me, it caught me, her loneliness. Um, she's lived a long, lonely life, a hard life, and she's seen the world change around her and hasn't been able to inflict change, or not in the way that you'd expect. I really like how um, Vijua played with that concept and the idea of ideas. If you've read this, you know what I mean, <laughs> but I'm not going to say too much. I want you to discover its magic for yourself. It is a really 
quite a slow book. I don't necessarily think it's something I will be rereading anytime soon because I don't know if I can handle that again. But yeah, V.U. Schwab's really impressed me here. I, I recommend <laughs> The Invisible Life of Annie LaRue. I can see why some people haven't liked it and um, they maybe have gone into it thinking it's going to be very similar to her previous books, which it's not. Um, it very much feels more of an adult, slow, just heartbreaking story really. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, that does have some, it does have some whimsy, of course. The love interest works in a bookshop, there's a cat, lots of things that I love are happening in this. But it's not a super high action story, it's um, yeah, like I said, pretty slow, but I liked taking my time with this. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's a new favourite book, guys. I know, I know, everyone has been saying that they've seen a lot of good reviews for it and yeah, I'm, I'm on board, I'm on board, I get it, I get it, I do recommend it. Um, maybe not to everybody, there's a siren. So on that note, <laughs> I'm gonna go get in the bath and read fresh water, I'm probably gonna cry again, but this time you're not gonna see it because I'll be in the bath. But yeah, that's the plan, speak to you in a bit. <laughs> Hi, once again, much time has passed and I haven't finished out this vlog. Um, the week kind of got away from me. I was prioritising filming my TBR, which should be up before this vlog. I hope you guys don't mind that the TBR went up before this vlog. I wasn't sure which one to put up first, but I feel like people want to see the TBR first. But I have read some things since we last spoke and Tiberius is being an otter, so here's some cuteness for you. Such a cuddly boy. I mean, he looks like he wants to kill me most of the time, but he is very cuddly. Oh, 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 maybe not. Okay, okay. Look at the rage in his face. I swear he's sweet when he's not on camera. <laughs> Can I please? <sighs> Finally free. Thanks for that. His sister is actually sweet all the time, though. She just sleeps a lot. Relatable. Oh, and of course, <sighs> Tibbs. I just put that poster up. I'm not even in focus. But before we get into the reading updates, I wanted to do a Fairy Loot unboxing because my September box has arrived. As you guys know, I work for Fairy Loot, so this is not a review. I'm just going to be showing you really quickly what's included, and I'll put the artist's name on the screen. I will hopefully have chaptered this as well, so if unboxings aren't your thing, you can just skip ahead if you want to. But stick around if you want to see what's in September's box. So this is the spoiler card for this month. The theme is Under the Sea. Up first, one of the larger items. This is a To Kill a Kingdom inspired ceramic mug. So it's the usual type that we've included before. This is what the artwork looks like. So those are the characters there, yellow inside, and we have a quote in there too, which says, it's like holding a story rather than a person. She feels wild and infinite in my arms. So that's just printed on the inside as well. We also have this hairbrush, which has a seashell design on it. So it's kind of like a tangle teaser, but a bit bigger. And we have an Ursula inspired key ring. This is the poor unfortunate souls key ring, which says poor unfortunate souls. And we have the trident. Next we have a pouch with some metal straws in. So we have a thicker one this time for like smoothies and milkshakes and things. And it's like an ombre blue. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> the one big, one smaller. They both have quotes on them and they come with a cleaning spoolie. The larger one has beach please engraved on it and the smaller one has make waves. And we have this large pencil case with a zip which is lined as well and it has a quote on here from sea witch by sarah henning which says don't grant all the prince's requests darling girl men are always asking for more than they should and it has the same design on both sides we also have a postcard with artwork of atlantis on it and the tarot cards this month again are inspired by the nevernight fandom so we have the seven and eight of swords we have ashlyn and trick and then the book this month is Fable by Adrienne Young. Our edition has shimmery sprayed blue edges. And hopefully you can see on camera. Yep, there we go. There's the shimmer. This is also an exclusive cover as well. It's a complete redesign. And as always, it comes signed by the author. And we have a letter from the author with this artwork on one side too. 
I'm excited to try this one. I do typically like books that are set around the sea, so hopefully I like this one too. It's from the author of um, Sky in the Deep, which I have been wanting to try for a while. Um, but this one we follow a character called Fable, whose father is the most powerful trader in the Narrows. But she's been abandoned for the last four years. Her father abandoned her on this island where she's been having to try and survive. And the only thing that she wants is to take the place by his side on his crew. To do that, Fable enlists the help of a young trader named West to get her off the island and across the Narrows to her father. But Fable soon finds that West isn't who he seems. Together they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the Narrows if they are to stay alive. It sounds pretty cool. I've seen some good reviews of it so far. So that's the book that we have this month. Um, in the fairy scoop we have an author interview um details of the read along which again it has my face but again we've done another <laughs> switch up another one that i want to join it in on but will i have the time because <laughs> my tbr once again is looking pretty intense but next month's theme is wicked hearts for the october box and yeah that was everything that we have in september's fairy loop do let me know what your favorite item was and whether or not you've read this book or are excited to read this book. <laughs> okay, so reading updates. I've moved to this side so Mr. Seam Stealer can be in shot. But the last time I spoke to you, I was, well, I had a plan to get through a bunch of uh, quicker reads before the end of the month, which I accomplished. The first one I read was Freshwater by Akweke Amezi. And yeah, this was sad. It wasn't tear jerking, like it didn't make me sob or anything, but it was certainly an impactful hard read in places and I made some assumptions about this book from the synopsis which I really shouldn't have so I am so sorry that in my TBR I said that I thought that this was about DID. It's really not, it's much more spiritual and magical um, in that way but it does still talk about mental health as our main character um, Ada, her situation. Yeah she has some trauma, there are many trigger warnings in this, um, suicide, self-harm, sexual assault, um, to name a few so I definitely check the trigger warning content warnings on this one before you pick it up but it was just so beautifully written this author is just amazing at conveying such strong emotions and showing great depth in relationships through between characters in such small books I was very impressed with pet it doesn't read very similarly that much but the writing is still impeccable so what this book is actually about it's about Ada who's born in Nigeria we follow her through her whole life or up to present tense anyway we see her birth and um, we learn more about her family before her birth as well but she is born with godlings sharing the space in her head and what they refer to as the marble room so a lot of this is told from a collective perspective of we of these godlings so a goddess created these beings spiritual beings these godlings that have, are born within her and they have their own agenda they have their own mission that they want to accomplish and it's really about how Ada deals with that and having control and giving up control when it's needed to these beings, the relationships that they, she has with them. And also it is a little bit humorous in places as well because, because the collective we, the godlings, will have observations on her relationships and the choices that she's making. It talks a lot about sex and um, sexuality gender identity as well. Um, all handled very well but I would need to check more into the representation of certain things. I have since watched a couple of reviews for this book. Um, I really went into this not knowing much apart from what I assumed from the synopsis and you know what assuming does. <laughs> I'm just blown away again by this author's writing. It's just so beautiful, it hurts, but I was just compelled throughout the whole thing, so engaged. I loved how it talked about culture and spirituality and mental health and also family relationships, trauma, how people deal with that kind of thing. Yeah, but it was ultimately pretty, pretty sad, <laughs> but so, so well done. I think Akweki Mezi is an author that I'm just going to continue to love with every new book that they bring out. Um, I have just actually bought um, their newest one. I'm blanking on the name, I'll put it on the screen, but I'm excited for that one too. That one's been getting very good reviews. I will say this is another one that I'm holding back on giving five stars to because I don't feel like I took it in that well. I feel like this was a bit too smart for me in places. I definitely missed things. It's another one that I would probably get a lot more from on the second read. So I'm giving it a high four star rating, um, but I know if I was to reread it in the future, it would probably end up being a five star read then. It has a lot of depth to it, it has a lot to say, and 
also I liked the structure of it I thought it was very well paced I will actually link um and Jerry's review from Onyx Pages down in the description I watched that after and she does a much better job of explaining this book more so than I ever could and I agree with everything that she said about it there's definitely a lot that you could talk about but I'm gonna try and be brief because I have some more I can talk to you about but yes recommend and thank you so much to Bridget who gifted this book to me for my birthday I really loved it I knew I would I didn't love it quite as much as Pet I think Pet was just a bit easier for me um but definitely like I said I will be rereading and also reading the newest one that I just bought from the same author but yes if you haven't tried either of the two yet I definitely suggest it so then I went and read Tomie by Junji Ito. This was a gift from Rebecca. Thank you so much, Rebecca. This is big. This is like 800 pages, so this took me a lot longer than I initially expected it would. This is a lot of stories about Tomie, a very beautiful young woman who every man that she sets her eyes on becomes infatuated with, but they always have the urge to kill her. And then she always comes back. She can regenerate, which is really cool. I will say though, this felt a bit overly long. Like I'm not mad at looking at all of this while well, reading all of this um, with these beautiful illustrations. I love Junji Ito's art style. I think it's phenomenal, but it did feel a bit repetitive <laughs> because it always kind of ended up in the same way. I mean, there were some that were very much weird and out there and those are my favorite kind of towards the end of this. But kind of in the middle section, there were a lot of um, chapters that felt very similar to each other. And although I liked seeing all the different ways that Tomie could regenerate and all the kind of situations that she gets herself in, I feel like there could have been some more interesting deaths. I don't know, after reading uh, Gyo, I was just expecting a little bit more. I still really enjoyed it though. This is a free star read, uh, like a high free star read, I should say. Um, but I definitely want to read Uzumaki soon. I didn't get it on my TBR for October, which is a bummer. But if I can fit it in, because I feel like that's one I'm going to really like. That feels more psychological. This was a bit more body horror, I guess, because of the regeneration and things. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fun time. It was a fun time. So happy I read that one. And then I read The Girl from the Other Side, which was just so freaking cute and wholesome. It's a story of a young girl and a monster, and the monster cares for the young girl after she's been abandoned. It's set in a world where there's the inside and the outside. People that are infected are known as outsiders and they become monsters. So humans are really scared of them, but there's this unlikely relationship between this monster and this young girl and it was really really cute it was so short though i need more i need the second volume i don't have too much to say on it because it was so short but again absolutely beautiful art it wasn't particularly spooky or anything even though the art is very creepy like the monster character does look kind of creepy i really really enjoyed the art style and i like the story um but again it was very very short i think this is giving this one like a low four star rating but I will definitely be continuing with that. And a huge thank you to Kaylee again for this one. I've had it on my shelves for quite a while now, haven't I? <laughs> I knew I'd enjoy it and I definitely did. So I recommend that one as well. And then the last thing I read was the Skywood graphic novel, which is a gift from William. So thank you so much again, William. This was a fun one. It was definitely more action packed than I expected. But we follow a character called Willa. I guess it's science fiction, but almost, I did pick it for dystopian I guess you could call it dystopian as well um <laughs> maybe I'm stretching that a bit but it's set on earth in the future I think but there's a lot less gravity like gravity it's just a lower sense of gravity so there was this thing called g-day where everything changed the gravity changed and a lot of people died and a lot of things just like started to float away um so that was intense to begin with <laughs> definitely high stakes if you're not careful you can fly off the face of the earth into space there's nothing to stop you um so it's really cool concepts I really like uh, Willa's kind of, well, the main relationship I'd say we have in here is between her and her father. That's really interesting. And there's dangers and things in this um, secrets. Um, but it's just getting started. It's just the first volume. So not too much to say about it. But again, the art though, just to show you like the first couple pages. And then I guess I can show you. Like, that's not too spoilery but yes really really gorgeous art once again like this is a destruction <laughs> kind of thing so really really cool and um, again i'm giving this one a high free star i just couldn't really get my teeth sunk into it that much because it's the beginning you know it's just the beginning i haven't really got to know these characters yet that much at all but really interesting concept and it is slightly terrifying so yeah read that one as well so those are what 
I've read recently. This week, well, yeah, in this vlog, I think I read seven things. So these six and also The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So firstly, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I gave four stars. I really enjoyed it. I know why people wouldn't, I did. And then I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which is a five star read. I just can't believe just how impactful that was. That book hurt me, but it was it was gorgeous. So yeah, that's a new favorite. And then Red Falling Kingdoms, which I gave three stars. Still not sure about this. I will be continuing. Do let me know your thoughts on the series, as I mentioned. And then these ones that I just talked to you about. So not bad. I actually did finish all of these like by, it was on Tuesday I finished these. <laughs> and I haven't picked anything up since because I've just been busy doing other things. Um, but in the next reading vlog, if you've seen my TBI, you know it's all gonna be like horrors and thrillers and spooky things. I'm so excited. So I'm really excited to be vlogging the month of October for all the spooky and spoopy things. <laughs> October's just my time to shine, man. Honestly, I feel more myself when <laughs> October rolls around. I don't know, that might be a bit cliche, but if you were late, <laughs> let me know. So that was this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let me know your thoughts on all of the books. Um, if you've read them, um, if you're excited to read them, let me know. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. Much appreciated. I'm going to ask you guys this time around to leave me an emoji of flowers. Let's go for flowers this time. So thank you so much for watching again. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're doing all kinds of well. Chat to me down in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and I will catch you in the next one. My loves. Bye y'all. <laughs>